that before established religion, the peoples of Great Britain pretty much got along. There was the odd tribal conflict. Occasionally one tribe would join up with another one to become a bigger tribe. But in essence, a relatively peaceful 450,000 years. Now, here, on the land where Kielder stands, there have been settlements for over 300,000 years. This can be proven by bodies found, cave art going back to 7,500 BC. Tools, structures, cairns. We know that the majority of these tribal groups lived in peace because over 90% of them died of old age or disease. After religion arrived, the majority of bodies you find have been attacked. Their skulls shattered with a sword, an axe, or a club. Well, if you go back to 130 AD, the Great Wall of Hadrian was being built. The tribes, very, very grateful to the Romans. I know a lot of people would think, oh, they'll be fighting them. No, they were very grateful to the Romans because their only enemies, the Picts from Scotland, they're building a big wall. We're not going to have to worry about all them Picts coming over here, doing bad things to us. The Romans were very clever in how they dealt with the sizable Northumbrian tribes, like the Votadini and their neighbouring tribes, the Brigantes. Instead of demanding that these tribes follow Roman gods, instead they were told that they were not even under Roman rule. They were told that they were a, fr a friendly client kingdom, they called them, living amongst the Romans. The tribal laws that they had would be followed, and these peaceful folk would act as a buffer against the more warlike Scots. How about that? Big tribe comes waving weaponry at you, and you say, we'll just be a client of yours. In other words, you haven't conquered us, but we'll pretty much do what you say. This is the area where we're in, where the real King Arthur, the tribal chieftain known as the Half-Roman, but he'd be slightly nearer the western coast. And peace remained until Christianity arrived. Ooh, getting the odd noise here. That's, that's a good start. King Edwin, a pagan, was converted and began carrying out an extensive program of conversion and baptism. Sounds lovely on paper, but it meant murdering anybody who didn't want to become a Christian. These gentle people had survived and lived well for hundreds of thousands of years. So the question would be, why would you want to change to this other faith that was soaked in the blood of the innocent? Well, Edwin declared, I was told by God to help the people. There's a door just opened and literally closed directly behind me. How amazing is that? We're, we're going to be blessed tonight, I think. So anyway, he was told by, it always worries me when somebody says, I was told by God. Because, you know, in civilized parlance, if somebody came up to you and said, I've just had a conversation with God, they would get a room with a straitjacket. But anyway, Penfrith, who was a pagan scribe, wrote, Edwin guided thousands to their deaths, the living becoming sheep who would obey every order. You always knew where King Edwin could be found. You could follow him by the trail of the dead. Edwin made Northumberland and far wider, the leading spiritual power in Britain. On the settlements here around Kielder, they gave a respectful no to the offer to be baptized. So King Edwin declared that they were heretics, heretics against God, and ordered his soldiers to wipe them out. These people were for or against nobody. They just wanted to be left alone. Even a superpower like Rome could see they were gentle and not a threat. But the Christians had to kill every single one. It's believed over 43,000 men, women and children were killed, belonging to the Brigantes, and possibly up to 62,000 Votadini. It was written, again by Penfrith, in the dark valley thought to currently lead to Kielder Reservoir. You could not walk nor ride, for the depth of the corpses stood over a man's height. The insects, birds and beasts fed relentlessly on our brothers and sisters. I saw a wolf carry off a baby as it cried. The creature stopped, ripped open its throat, 
for it to cry no more. Other villages were aflame, with soldiers stopping anyone escape the fire. Families joined hands in the heat and allowed the smoke to take their lives. These Christians, declaring their loathing for heretics, would still rape pagan women and rape their children too, before hacking them to pieces. Not far from here, near Kilda Castle, there's a pit where 17,000 Votadini were buried after Edwin's men had enjoyed what they described as sport with them. Now these tribesmen were big and strong, but their faith was against war and fighting. They believed it to be wrong. So on meeting these Christians, they were literally played with, mountain-sized men beaten, prodded with spears and swords to try and force them to fight, and yet most never did. And they were finished off. The more attractive women were given to Edwin and his retinue, others to his captains. All the rest were given to his men. And after they were finished, they were exterminated. For hundreds of years after this, some said that eerie figures rose from the ground to haunt the land, giving us some of Northumberland's earliest sightings. You're with Alan Robson, the Night Elves, and tonight from Kielder Castle. <laughs>